Okay, again, thank you and welcome to our module two. Again, this is gonna cover the user interface of DranView. So, um, you know, what are what are these things in the ribbon bar? What do the menus mean? Different things like that. We will cover that. And definitely after this, we're gonna pay attention to the chats to answer your questions. So this is the basics on how to navigate DranView. So if you look, it's a very similar to most programs where you select a, a uh, menu item and then you have a bunch of ribbon bars or ribbon items to go that relate to the data that you're talking about. So I'm gonna just close out my file here, even though I've customized it. Oops, I don't wanna save. So when you're first starting with DranView, you will start up DranView just like anything, you just go file and then you can open and you can path to any file. You can see, of course, I've got a lot of documents here, but uh, again, what I'm running here is DranView Enterprise. And for the most part, all the versions will look exactly the same. So you can path to any particular file on your hard drive or anything that's a network, network connected to your instrument. You can certainly do that or to your computer. Um, this site, when you when you have a site open, DranView has the ability to append data together. So a good example is on our Dran Expert product where you might have several different energy surveys that were done back to back. You can append those files together. And let's say you did four one week surveys in a month, you can append them together to get one uh, four week uh, uh, survey within DranView and not four individual ones. So that's an example of some of the site capabilities there. You can import and you can download. So you can import from an HDPQ database, you can download from an HDPQ instrument, and we'll talk about those because uh, there's actually ribbon bar items for that. And once you have a file open, you can save, you can save as just the normal things within Windows. You can print, of course, you can print any screen within DranView, and then you have a print setup and of course closing. So. Let me go open up that file that I had before. And this is just a demonstration file on SAG directivity that we have. So uh, this is the DranView interface. The DranView interface is divided into three areas and the two right ones are called your viewing panes. Um, you have your timeline, time plot or your history of monitoring pane and you have your event details pane. To the left here, you have a list of events. And so really this is a small test database. So it was very good for this training because it doesn't have much data. And so this is a recording that we did with the HDPQ instrument to highlight our answer modules. And we have a SAG directivity answer module uh, available in, in uh, the instruments that will tell you the direction of a SAG. So was it upstream, was it downstream? And this is just a small file that we created um, to demonstrate that to people. So you can see on the left, I have a list of events. Okay, this is a very short list. This could be a month long survey, uh, a very long time survey, but it is a list of events recorded. And you can see when I select an event, and again, if you put your eyes more towards the right, you can see the details of that event show up on the right hand side here. And as I select another event, you will also see the details of the event. And I can go down and I can select any particular event in the database and the rightmost display, the rightmost screen contains the details of that particular event. In addition to that, I have the history of my recording. Again, this is a very short, uh, short duration survey, but for the most part, this is gonna be days or weeks or months worth of information. And this is the timeline or the history of that. So you will see it begins to the left and it ends to the right. And uh, you will see that this is all tied together with all the rest of the panes. And I'm gonna just do something really quick because I close this off. I'm gonna just simplify what we're looking at. and. Um, I'm gonna go put this back later and we're gonna describe what we're doing later. So what you can see here is I have my voltage on top and my current on the bottom. And you can see I have an event marker over here. So every time that I have selected, if I choose one of these triangles, like if I go to the right, I select an event, you can see everything is linked together. I've, I've selected that event or I've highlighted that event in the event list, as well as display the details of that event in the right. So I have several ways of navigating the information um, that is in my event database. So you have the time, time plot pane, you have the event details pane, and 
we have to refer to something called the active pain. So you could see in the time plot pane, because that's the last one that I was working on, you could see this blue border around it. When I switch over to the event detail pane, you could see that becomes the active pane because it has the blue border. So any pane that has a blue border is the active pane. And what that means is all these tools up on the top, which we'll get to in a minute, they're gonna act on that active pane. So if I wanna zoom into something in the timeline, I click to the left, now that's the active pane, and then I pick up my zoom tool, okay? So again, we have this kind of uh, two or three pane, it's actually called two pane, but there's three windows of information available to you. Again, on the left, is the uh, um, the event list from the instrument. The middle one is the timeline, the history of what's been recorded. And the right is the details of any particular event that's been selected. You can change the size or the portions or proportions of each pane. Simply uh, click, hold, and, and click the, with your left mouse button and hold the dividing line and let it go. And you've now reproportioned it. So I can do that to anything that I'd like to do as well as you can see on the on the uh, ribbon bar here, I can maximize, minimize, or select the 50-50 proportion. So if I go mid, I've now made them 50% of the screen uh, for the timeline and the event list. If I go all the way to the left, I broaden my entire available screen to the event details. I click the right button. I do the same thing to the timeline. And again, this event list is always considered separate. It's always on the left and you get everything to the right of that for your timeline and your event details. So again, I'm gonna click mid and you can see that it, it, it splits at about 50-50 there. But again, you can reproportion this entire interface. So let's talk a little bit, bit about the toolbar here. First of all, when I talk about event navigation, I can also go and use these um, kind of control keys here, just like a DVR. If I wanna to go to the previous event and put your eyes down here and you will see this black highlight move. So I go to the previous event, one at a time. Now I go to the next event, one at a time. I could go to different event groups. So DranView will also, and this is not a very good example here, but DranView has the ability of group events together by, by a power quality event. So this can go forward to one group or back, uh, I'm sorry, uh, back uh, to the previous group and forward to the next group. And this is kind of like uh, rewind to the first event or go all the way to the last event in your event list. So pretty basic kind of navigation if you've ever watched a video on YouTube and we guys, you know, we understand that. So over here, you have the event subset. If I pull that down, that's an event filter. So I can view events by type. I can look at all events, all triggered events. Again, all means journaled events, triggered events. So there's a whole bunch of categories here, but triggered events would exclude the journal events sag and swell and interruptions would be only those RMS kind of events. Um, uh, dips, swells and interruptions, you would not see all the other triggered events and you would not see snapshot events. And kind of the opposite situation for transient events where you'd only see transient, you would not see the other types. So you have the event, you have the ability to look at them by event type. You also have the ability to sort uh, ascending or descending or by event type and some other more advanced tools here that you can group by site in our multi-site capability, which we'll talk about, I think, in our third web meeting. Um, you have the ability to view different details of the events here, event numbers, uh, date and time, so you can individually select what you see, as well as you can search by it for a particular event as well, okay? So a lot of power here in the ability to view information. Now, what you see just briefly, we'll go through this. Um, these are HDPQ capabilities where I can VNC into an HDPQ instrument and control it remotely. I can do something similar and connect, but download the data from a, a uh, Dranitz HDPQ instrument. Again, that's called Dranitz HDPQ Live. If I wanna generate a report, I can uh, just click here and start the report writer. Um, this is something called the snapshot feature. This is only available in Dranview Enterprise. And we'll talk about this, I think, in our next uh, meeting on uh, St. Patrick's Day on the 17th. This is like bookmarks for particular um, screen configurations. So when I zoom in, I find a particular event, I can bookmark it. I can go unzoom and go find something else and bookmark that and you have random access back to those. This is a zoom tool. Uh, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. It's the ability to zoom in horizontally and vertically to any time plot in any event that you display. Um, 
And this is a time frame marker. And we'll just show that real quick. If you want to just highlight a particular time frame on the instrument, you can just select it and it kind of highlights that. And I, it's a weird color there. That's something that I played with yesterday um, when I was uh, reviewing some of the color selections. So you can easily just shut that off as well by unclicking that. You have a Delta tool. So if you ever want to look at um, the difference between two points, you can use the Delta tool. So as an example, maybe I want to go look at the difference between how low this sag went from its normal condition down to here. I would pick up the Delta tool. I would click and hold one part and then I click and drag down to where I want to do it. And you can see, unfortunately, it's cut off. So we'll, we'll do this on the side over here. We'll do this right down to here. And this is a better example. You could see this drop by 14.57 volts. Okay. So you could draw any delta tool, both left and right. And you could see the difference in the x axis and time, usually, and the y axis and whatever parameter. This happens to be voltage. Okay, so it gives you the ability to look at the, the width and the depth of events and different things like that. You want to shut them off or, or delete them, just right click and delete them individually. It's a nice, easy way to get rid of them. Okay, and then you have the ability to stack and overlay. We're going to talk about that in one of our uh, upcoming sessions today, where you have the ability to click here and stack. So I've stacked voltage and current on top of each other, and I click it again, and now they are overlaid. You can go to the event properties and do that as well. And you can do that on any one of these panes. So if I wanted to do that on the event details pane, I go select that and I can stack and overlay the information just by clicking that stack and overlay button. You have the more or the less, so you can effectively zoom into information on one click to kind of expand out what you've done. So I click more and you can see I've kind of zoomed into my data or I can click less. So it's a, it's a quick way to kind of maximize and minimize what you look at. But one of the more powerful capabilities is the zoom tool, okay? The ability of the zoom tool, you just draw a box around what you want to look at and you can zoom in. So I'll take the example here. Maybe I want to look how far this sag went down. So I click zoom, zoom in, and I basically click and hold and I draw a box around the area that I want to zoom into. And you can see I've expanded my X and Y coordinates to that particular area. So maybe I want to zoom in a little bit more. You can do this virtually an infinite number of times. You also have the ability to unzoom. So I right click and anytime you right click anywhere in Dranview, you come up with properties and tools available for that particular thing that you're looking at. So you can right click and you can unzoom one level or you can right click and unzoom all of the levels. Okay, so that's a very powerful feature. So that's pretty much the home toolbar. When you go to insert, and we're not going to cover these today because they're more advanced topics, but for Dranview Enterprise, you have the ability to um, add different chart types, min-max charts, uh, magnitude duration charts, energy charts. You can introduce and put in various tables. You can put in phaser diagrams. You can put in text annotations. You can add images as we spoke about, and you can see that on the right-hand side here, I've been adding these things as we go along, okay? So these are more advanced tools, but they are on the insert capabilities and the insert tab. I go to the data tab. These again, a little more uh, advanced topics, which we'll cover at another time. This is the harmonics and time plot calculator. Um, mostly available, these capabilities in, in Dranview Enterprise, but let's say I want to uh, recompute re harmonics from my waveforms. Um, maybe I didn't store harmonics in my survey. This is an example of how you can do that, in addition to other parameters that can be recomputed. In addition, you can scale harmonics, and this is the rescue kit. We're going to cover the rescue kit and how to use that in a future web meeting. But again, this is changing your CT, your CT scale factors, inverting CTs and things like that. Um, view, this is basically what you want to view within Dranview. So um, the workspace bar, well, that is your event list basically and all everything over here, okay? A data table, well, what you see here in the timeline and the event details, it's just plotting the data that the instrument has, but maybe you want to look at those data points. So you can look at the data table. Instrument configuration. I want to know what the configuration of the instrument is or was for this particular survey. So that's all recorded in your database. 
and you can see it opens up a new tab and I can see all the details of that down to the version of firmware, um, how it was set up, the CTs and different things there. Um, let me just close that out, make it simpler. <clears throat> So you have different notes you can add. There's a harmonic demo tool. Um, we use this during our seminars where you can simulate various harmonics and see the effects maybe on the neutral or THD, different things. Uh, options, well, you can configure what you see in DranView. You can configure the, uh, the ribbon bars, the toolbars. Uh, I mentioned the automatic updates. This is where you can change the, uh, um, how often it checks for automatic updates, turn it on, turn it off, look for an update right now of your software. So uh, registration, if you're new to DranView, uh, for DranView Pro and DranView Enterprise, this is where you would register your copy so these automatic updates can happen. So this is how we know who you are. We can push out the fact that we have a new copy of DranView available for you or a new version.